The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. The risen Christ is with us. Praise the Lord. Welcome to First United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Wade Powell. It's um, a pleasure. I apologize. I was, I was just walking around visiting, uh, and all of a sudden it was, it was time for us to, uh, to begin worship. But you know what I like to say is fellowship is part of worship. So we were worshiping even before we knew we were worshiping here to, in here today, right? Um, so here's something interesting. We've got... Um, uh, talking about children and things like that, I'm gonna. Uh, I've had some folks comment on my children stole today, and so I'm uh, just feeling all, you know, children, youth, all of that kind of good stuff. Our our children's Sunday school has been going through a um, uh, a lesson on superheroes. Of course, it all culminated in uh, God being the ultimate superhero, but. Since I went over there, I decided to, you know, I had to show them the superhero stuff, too. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, if you saw me running around, walking around, and said, hey, you don't look very pastoral today, well, I beg to differ. <laughs> but you may see some others in their superhero shirts. As a matter of fact, when my wife walked in the door, she said, I hope nobody... I'm wearing this Captain America shirt. She's back there, Captain America shirt. I hope, yeah, I hope maybe everybody will know. So anyway, that's what we've been doing in Children's Sunday School. Um, Vacation Bible School is coming up, and we have got, this is a celebration, y'all. We have got about three times as many kids signed up for Vacation Bible School as we did the last time we had Vacation Bible School. So that is a huge, huge thing. And to be honest, we've still got about a week bef until Vacation Bible School. And our Vacation Bible School this year is going to be one day. So it's more of a Vacation Bible day camp. Um, it's one day uh, next week, next Saturday. And um, the blessing is we've, we've probably still going to get a lot of those last minute registrations that we always get. Uh, over the course of this next week. That's the huge blessing. The difficult thing is we've had, uh, we need volunteers. We, we, we uh, uh, have had, we've had great, uh, you know, been blessed with, with lots of volunteers. Some of the volunteers are not going to be able to be here, turns out, uh, next week. So um, we, we definitely could use some additional volunteers uh, to be part of our vacation. It's just one day, it's next Saturday, Vacation Bible School. Now let me tell you, if you're interested, if you feel today God calling you, whether it's right now or at the end of the service or what have you, uh, if you feel God calling you to be um, uh, part of Vacation Bible School, to be a volunteer on some level, even if it's just helping get kids from one place, from one room to the next, uh, I would encourage you today, Brooke Mercer, our Director of Children's Ministries, is having a luncheon and kind of a training to tell you what to expect today uh, at noon in the Children's Building. Our Children's Ministry Center is right here across the street. That's where Vacation Bible School will be. That is where um, the training will be today. So a luncheon. Uh, if you don't have lunch plans, or if you maybe want to cancel your lunch plans, uh, Brooke's going to have lunch for you over there. And uh, like I said, with as many children as we have uh, coming up in Vacation Bible School, um, more hands on deck, uh, the better. Uh, and I think uh, God would just be honored and proud, and, uh, and I would love to see you uh, be a part of that. Um, let's continue our worship. Let's continue our worship with our call to worship, and I, I would invite you to stand as you're able today for that call to worship. We gather together this day, blessed by one spirit, we gather in unity and love. Please remain standing for our opening hymn when I survey the wondrous cross on page 298.
please be seated. You may be seated, and I would invite you to join me in our opening prayer. Let us pray. Speak truth to us this day, O God. Speak truth to the most inward parts of our hearts and minds, that we might speak your truth in love, and that you might speak your truth through us each and every day. In your holy name we pray. Amen. And before we get to our prayer of confession, I must confess, I forgot to tell you what these were for. Some of you, I don't know if we ran out, we had these at our 8.30 service. Some of you may have these little red dot circles. Um, These are for Vacation Bible School. I meant to tell you a minute ago. Uh, If you have one of these, please write your name on it and write a a prayer or a a word of encouragement for our children. But it's it's an opportunity to, to, to write some sort of prayer or something for uh, Vacation Bible School and for our children. And you can either put them in the offering plate uh, later as we receive the offering or leave them in your seats uh, after the worship service and we'll pick those up. And uh, Brooke Mercer is gonna do something cool with them for Vacation Bible School. I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, it's gonna be neat. So uh, I confess that I did not let you know that earlier when I should have, but that's okay. We have a forgiving, God. So we're going to go to God in our prayer of confession uh, as a church, and then we'll take a moment for our own personal silent confession. Would you join me in the bulletin? Gracious God, we want to live as people worthy of your calling. Help us recognize your gifts and blessings that we may live up to our calling and bless others with our words and our lives. When we fall short, have mercy on us. When we don't know our mistakes, speak truth to us through your loving guidance. Create a new heart within us, a heart full of love and gratitude. Nourish us with the grace of your presence that we may indeed live as people worthy of your calling. Amen. I invite you now to a time of personal silent confession. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. This proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Our prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our first reading comes from Ephesians. Uh, chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. Paul wrote this letter while he was imprisoned in Rome, and the purpose was being to comfort and encourage the believers in the Roman province of Asia Minor, which is now the country of Turkey. The basic idea in Ephesians is that God's eternal plan is being worked out through Christ and his body, the church. Chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, I, a prisoner serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. Be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Always keep yourselves united in the Holy Spirit and bind yourselves together with peace. We are all one body we have the same spirit, and we have all been called to the same glorious future. There is only one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and there is only one God and Father, who is over us all and in us all and living through us all. However, he has given each one of us a special gift according to the generosity of Christ. 
That is why the scriptures say, when he ascended to the heights, he led a crowd of captives and gave gifts to his people. Notice that it says he ascended. This means that Christ first came down to the lowly world in which we live. The same one who came down is the one who ascended higher than all the heavens so that his rule might fill the entire universe. He is the one who gave these gifts to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. Until we come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature and full-grown in the Lord, measuring up to the full stature of Christ. Then we will be no longer like children, forever changing our minds about what we believe because someone has told us something different or because someone has cleverly lied to us and made the lie sound like truth. Instead, we will hold to the truth in love, becoming more and more in every way like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. Under his direction, the whole body is fitted together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand this morning as you are able for our gospel reading. It comes this morning from John's Gospel, chapter 6, beginning with verse 24. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boat and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, very truly, I tell you, you were looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, what sign are you going to give us then so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. John's Gospel is one of my favorites, but it's not the easiest of the Gospels to grasp. Uh, John is rich in similes and metaphors and symbols and poetic images and so forth. It's easy for our matter-of-fact minds to get lost in that beauty and deeper meaning of the gospel and not fully comprehend what it is that John is conveying to us about Jesus. Now, I've had some uh, people, you know, in my life who consider me kind of artsy. I, uh, I oil paint. Uh, I did stand-up comedy in college. I've I've been known to go crazy decorating my kids' birthday cakes and my granddaughter's birthday cake. Um, but I've, I've also had um, some people who know me consider me to be a little bit more business-minded. Uh, I ran a successful business for several years. I can actually read a balance sheet. Uh, I can develop marketing and, uh, and business strategies for the church. And sometimes, I'll admit, it's hard for me to separate myself from the black and white of reality. Even so, I gotta tell you, um, I've had people uh, look at my oil paintings and, and want to discuss them with me, and, and they want to know the meaning of my work. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll say things like, 
what does that Hereford cow mean? Uh, you know, what, is that, what does that cow represent in your art? And, and, and I usually just say, uh, it's a cow. I like cows. I thought the cow would look good there. <laughs> And that's kind of the, ex the, the extent of it. But, but the more I think about things like that, the more I get questioned and, and asked and prompted and, and, and probed to, to, to go through that and think about that. Why did I paint that cow? You know, or why did I paint the fence that particular way? Or, or what about the sunshine coming through the, the live oak tree, the branches of the live oak tree and stuff? And, and, and the more I think about things like that, the more I realize they're probably was some underlying reason why I painted what I painted. There truly was some sort of inspiration behind uh, painting the clouds rising above the, the, the steeple of the little country church or, or whatever. I'm the one that painted the painting, but still it took someone to help me interpret what it was that I painted. That brings me back to the Gospel of John. We come to the text of today's reading so full of metaphor, so resistant to simple, straightforward interpretation, and, it, and that makes it, I think, at times a little bit difficult. Stanley Hauerwas, Stanley Hauerwas, the great theologian from Duke University and Southwestern University graduate, uh, and old college running buddy of our very own First United Methodist Church member, Paul Prim, that Stanley Hauerwas said in his book, Unleashing the Scriptures, that the biggest, the, the, the biggest mistake that the church made was allowing us Christians to take the Bible home with us in an attempt to read the Bible ourselves. Now, before you disown Stanley Hauerwas, me and Paul Prim, I just want to say that reading the Bible is important. Having a relationship with God through His written Word is extremely important. What Stanley Hauerwas is saying is that reading Scripture is so important that we ought to be very careful in our reading and interpretation that we don't bend and shape Scripture to simply accommodate our own agendas. Drawing upon the old Jewish tradition of reading Scripture, uh, Jewish tradition says that uh, in order to read Scripture, you've got to have two Jews in order two Jews to get, it almost sounds like the beginning of a joke, doesn't it? But you've got to have two Jews together to read Scripture, and that's done to help ensure faithful reading and interpretation of God's Word. Scripture and the interpretation of Scripture is very communal in nature. It's very corporate. It's very, uh, Scripture thrives in groups. You've probably read passages on your own before and felt that you were very comfortable with your interpretation, but then got together with a Sunday school class or another small group to discuss the Scripture, and the Scripture at that point just seemed to pop, just seemed to come alive in the midst of your discussion. The Holy Spirit is with you and present and guiding you always, but even Scripture itself warns us in a good way. Scripture warns us in a good way that where two or three are gathered, God is there in the midst. You better believe it. So where do we go from here? What does that tell us? If we look at our Scripture uh, reading today from John, Jesus is accosted by a, a bunch of people wanting more bread. Our reading today comes just after Jesus miraculously fed over 5,000 people. The disciples got in a boat and they went across the sea and Jesus stayed behind for a bit. And the next thing you know, Jesus is walking on water, comes over to the disciples and instantly they make their way to the other side. Well, eventually the crowds realize that Jesus has gone off and, and, and they go to find him. And, and, and 
in verse, we started our, our reading in verse 24, but if we had started in verse 22, we see that the, the, um, the crowds are a little bit perplexed about things. Verse 22, the people remembered that there was only one boat for Jesus and the disciples, and, and the disciples took off in the boat. Jesus stayed behind, so where could Jesus have gone? How did he get wherever he went? Well, that's the reason for this perplexing question at the beginning of our reading today when the crowd finds Jesus, knowing that there wasn't a reasonable explanation for how he got over to Capernaum, they say to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? But Jesus doesn't answer their actual question of, Rabbi, when did you get here? Instead, he addresses what they're doing looking for him in the first place. He says, you've come looking for me not because of what has been revealed to you. You came because you wanted more food. You got hungry again, wanted more food. You thought, hey, Jesus is the guy with the endless tacos. Let's go find him. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that lasts for eternal life. We have trouble, like this crowd, sometimes seeing the big picture. We want what we want, and we want it now. That's, that, that's just sometimes our nature. And there's an old, you know, that's, that's one of the reasons so many folks have credit card debt up to here. I remember there's an old saying, Back when I was in business, uh, uh, you know, we use credit to buy things uh, that we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't like. Um, but that's sometimes our nature. Sometimes our nature is to take care of what's right in front of us, to do and only see that which is right in front of us, that which impacts us at this moment. And sometimes we do that neglecting the bigger, the more important picture. That's part of what our thriving congregations team is all about, trying to look at the bigger picture. Now, I'm not going to get into to thriving congregations today, but in a few weeks, we're going to be holding a church-wide town hall meeting to discuss thriving congregations and the emerging vision for First United Methodist Church. Um, but, but back to what I was saying about um, Jesus. He was pointing out that the crowd was only concerned with their perceived need, more bread. They never saw or understood their actual need. They missed the whole Messiah part. They were so focused on this temporary need that they missed that eternal gift. Jesus said, you people have tracked me down for food. You're working hard to get this bread, but what you need is something greater. You're still not getting what I'm offering. We get calls to the church quite often. I need help paying my electricity bill, they say. It's going to get cut off today at 11 o'clock or at 3 o'clock or what have you. It's going to get cut off. Can you help me? That's right now need. I've paid electricity bills. You know, I, I, I'll, I'll help with that electricity bill. I'll, I'll help you get some food. But what you need is a job or a budget. And that might sound harsh. It's true enough. But let's look at it from a, a larger perspective as Jesus. Uh, let's take Jesus' advice and go a little bit bigger picture here. You need a job but you also need a system or a hand up that helps you find the right resources, the right opportunities. We say, get a job, but what if you live in your car? That makes it pretty difficult. You have no address to put on a job application. You have no ID because you have no address. Get a job. Well, Mr. Christian, Mr. Preacher Man, I'm a single mom, recently diagnosed with leukemia, and I'm simply not able to clean the houses I was cleaning before. That's a true story, my friends. That's a true story from this week. That's a call that I got this week among several 
phone calls. And you know what I did? I gave her bread. Paid a few dollars on a light bill. I'm glad I gave her the bread. Jesus gave bread. But it wasn't until I started preparing for today's message that I realized that's all I offered her. I didn't lead her to Christ. I didn't talk to her about faith. Jesus says in verse 29, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. Did I bother to share my love of God with her? I was busy. I'm an important guy, senior pastor, big downtown church, tall steeple and everything. Somebody write her a check. Somebody get her that bread that perishes. I've got too many meetings to deal with things like eternal life and God's unending grace. That's got to change. That's got to change. I'm going to personally deliver a box of groceries to this woman's door. But I'm also going to talk to her, get to know her, invite her to be part of our family. And you, her brothers and sisters, her family, fellow Christians will nurture her and her children, not with light bills and bread, but with food that does not perish. I mentioned thriving congregations a minute ago. Uh, that's a group of First United Methodist Church members that have been tasked with helping discern God's vision for our church. Over the past week, I've been doing a, a series of interviews with team members from our thriving team. And some of the comments I've been hearing from this group are things like, what I used to think were, were, were uh, what I used to think was very important, I'm discovering might not be as important as I once thought. This group, whether they know it or not, are embracing that corporate understanding of working with the Holy Spirit for discernment and interpretation. They're seeing a bigger picture. They're determining what's bread and what's bread of life. Sometimes churches see their buildings, their worship styles, their particular traditions as the bread, the, the bread that those crowds were chasing after that they thought were of the utmost importance. This, this temporary stuff is sometimes understood to be the things of utmost important, but then, uh, importance, but then Jesus comes along and shakes things up, saying things like, what about those neighbors across the tracks? What's going to help get the gospel to them? What about the businessman down the street? What about the family with three kids? What about the teenager who doesn't have a ride to church? Those are bread of life questions. Of course, the point of our gospel reading today is that faith in Jesus Christ, the gift from heaven, the true bread, is offered to us without price. Faith in Christ by God's grace is our salvation. The crowds didn't get it, but we do. We get it. And because we know the point of the story, God's saving work through Jesus Christ let us commit ourselves to never confusing regular old bread with the bread of life. And most certainly, let us never offer one without offering also the other. God bless you. Our hymn of response today is found in our hymnal at number 620, One Bread, One Body.
please remain standing and join me for our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty and maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. As we prepare our offering this morning, we return to passing offering plates today. Um, so uh, I would encourage you as you prepare your offering today to um, also keep in mind that, um, that you can give uh, not just your financial blessings, but we also give to God our prayers for one another. And uh, I would encourage you to text in your prayer request today uh, as part of your offering. The number is 361-210-6720. It's printed in the bulletin uh, to text in your joys and concerns that we may offer them uh, in prayer during worship today.
Please be seated. As we prepare uh, to pray together the great thanksgiving, I want to um, also point out that our communion rail offering today uh, goes to uh, one of the African missionaries, Patrick Abro. I'm not sure if I said his last name uh, perfectly then, but um, some of you may be familiar with Patrick in so much as he's over in Africa, but he joins us uh, pretty much every Sunday. He may be on, on right now joining us uh, for worship uh, during our live stream uh, in Africa. And um, what's interesting, I, I noted uh, that he uh, speaks French, and somehow there's a way in which our worship service is translated to French in order for him to participate in worship. I thought that was interesting. And uh, uh, we welcome him and are grateful to support uh, his ministry there. And, and if you would like to support uh, his ministry, uh, there's information in the narthex uh, about him and the ministry. Uh, and if you would like to, to make contribution Today, as you come forward to receive Holy Communion, I would invite you to leave a, an offering on the communion rail uh, that will be sent to him. Um, and now let's, let's join together in the prayer of the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. Again, he gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. 
through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Thanks be to God. I would invite those that are assisting in Holy Communion, serving Holy Communion this morning to come forward. serve everyone here and then body of Christ given for you 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 come serve yeah. the body of Christ given for you Serve. Hello. Mary Jo, if you'll stand next to her. As you come forward to receive today, we have bread, we have our small communion cups, but we also have these self-contained communion packets, if you prefer and are more comfortable receiving them. They have the wafer on top and then the, pull the uh, peel back and, and the juice will be exposed at that point. Those are available to you. Otherwise, um, you're invited to come and share in this bread of life. given for you. Blood of Christ given for you. Blood of Christ given for you.
Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. May we go forth in the strength of your Holy Spirit to give ourselves to others in your holy name. Mighty God, uh, you are the one who sustains us, the one who lifts us up. You are the bread of life. Lord, today we pray for Allison Williams. Lord, we lift to you others as well. Uh, we lift to you uh, the Carrizo Comicrudo tribe of Texas traveling to South Dakota. Their traditional uh, services this week, uh, Sundance this week. We pray for safe travels, though. Lord, we also uh, lift to you prayers for courage and confidence for young adults leaving off, uh, leaving for college for the first time. Lord, be with them. Know that they do not go alone, that you go with them. Mighty God, there are those among us today that are mourning the loss of loved ones, that are enduring difficult trials of illness and pain and anxiety, those that are suffering from broken relationships, financial struggles. Lord, we ask that you helped them and us to see that some of these issues are simply bread. And we ask for your loving arms of life to surround them, to lift them, to carry them and us, bringing healing and comfort. Lord, we give thanks for your holy presence in this sacrament and in our lives. You are the bread of life. And we come to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, offering the prayer that you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is found at number 622 in your hymnal, There is a Fountain. I invite you to stand as you're able as we sing together.
I want to remind you one last time, if you're looking, if you do not have plan, lunch plans and are looking for something to do at lunch, they would love to have you over at the Children's Building uh, to help you understand and know where to go and what to do to help out uh, volunteering for our one-day vacation Bible school. Um, and by the way, if you do have lunch plans, you can cancel them, uh, postpone them till next week. Come on over to the Children's Ministry Building. Uh, and oh, and if you have the, the prayers and stuff, if you didn't get them in the offering plate, leave them in your seats and we'll pick them up after uh, the service so that Brooke Mercer can do whatever she's going to do with them. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and bring you peace today and always. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>